see. I am the greatest combat athlete of all time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Tell the Tape. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, AKA Triple C. And this video is brought to you by the one and only Apton. You may be a former fighter, you may be a former wrestler that doesn't like to take no for an answer. Well, guess what, guys? You need to go to Apton. That's right. I'm talking about the world's largest, the nation's largest sales company that will teach you how to sell. That's right. You will be going to door to door knocking. But guess what, guys? I know between 17, 18 year old kids that are four going college and they're making about a million to half a million dollars a year. Yep, yep, that's right. I said it, so you guys make sure to go to summersales.org slash triple C because it is time to level up. Here we have it. Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. I mean, think about it. Two division champ now with a record of nine and two. I mean, when, when you have the hands, you skip the line, you're able to do some amazing things, beat the right people. I mean, taking the least amount of damage than anybody, probably other than Brock Lesnar in history. Pretty incredible, you know, to Jamal Hill. At 12 and one, I will say this, guys, he did he did get uh, TKO'd. It was a submission, but he ended up, you know, his arm ended up being, you know, he ended up breaking his arm due to, uh, God, the dude didn't tab you. Talk about being tough, man. I tell you what, guys, first thing I noticed, I love this. I love these two thumbs up, you know? That is freaking super, super awesome, you know? Super cringy too, but I love it, All right? Five, five kills, uh, five decisions and zero submissions. I mean, both of these guys don't have a lot of fights, man. It's crazy. I mean, uh, it's 13 and that's 11. I mean, this guy only has two more fights more than Alex Pereira. 6'4", 6'4", reach 79, 79, age 36. And now age 29. I tell you what, guys, this is where your recovery starts to change a little bit. The further this fight gets into the later rounds, it changes a little bit. And I can tell you, because you know what? Jamal is 29 years young. He's still a young cat. He's still a young brother. But without further ado, let's talk about... Ah! Alex Bedane. I don't know if I did it right, but whatever, I tried. His strengths, his leg kicks. I mean, his ability to just hurt people. And I'll never forget it because when, when him and Israel met up in the back, he was like, hey man, it's like, I don't want to, you know, Israel got one loss. He's four and one against him. Is that what it is? Two and three and one? Three and one. I think I think he's three and one. I think he beat him, he beat him twice in kickboxing. And then he beat him once in, uh, in MMA. And then once finally Israel was able to finish him and knock him out. He was like, dude, I'm just like, like, no, like this guy, like, send it, like, no, no, like, that chapter's closed, that chapter's done. But there's one thing that he did is like, hey, teach me how to leg kick. His leg kick is absolutely crazy. It's absolutely different because he sets his butt out and he kicks. Like, it's not like he doesn't kick with his hip in. He literally kicks with his butt out and he'll catch you. And particularly with that crazy, that heavy shin, I can only imagine how hard that shin that he has is. But his number one threat, is his leg kick because he will do a really good job of breaking the foundation breaking that foundation to eventually bring in the left hook and really put people out and knock them out freaking senseless so the dude is onto something and he's doing something very very well and that's just breaking the foundation to eventually start bringing in the punches and once that left hook lands that's it not only does he have one, uh, not, not only does he have one punch knockout power, but he also has those knees, man. You guys, t people tend to forget when he did fight in New York. I don't know if it was Madison Square Garden or the Barclays Center. Uh, he was able to get like that skip knee and be able to, I think it was for his debut in the UFC. And the way that he was able to knock him out, absolutely incredible. I mean, you talk about power, you know? And the other thing too that we have to consider, cause you know, there's, there's, there's a technical, there's a tactical, and there's also the emotional. I mean, he has an ability to get revenge on the guy that beat the brakes off of Glover Teixeira. Jamal Hill guys, Jamal Hill really put the hands on Glover Teixeira and really hurt him. And that's one thing that Alex Spadeta could really do or he's motivated by. You know what? That guy that I gave a motorcycle to, that guy that thought I was gonna give him a Lamborghini, but it wasn't for him, I wanna do this for him. I wanna avenge that loss to, 
to, you know, to support my mentor, to, you know, as a gift. And I think that's, that's a greater gift that you could probably give a guy like, like Glover to share, because they're like brothers. But with, uh, for, without, without, you know, without further ado, let's talk about Alex Pereira's weaknesses. His grappling. His grappling skills. I mean, the ability of him, ugh, the ability of him being taken down by Israel. I mean, both these guys were kind of like, you know, because they're so good here. They're, they're such an A, A, A plus on their feet. And the other stuff, people are not taking them. And you wonder why. You wonder why people at light heavyweight or middleweight cannot take the fight there, cannot take the fight to the grapple. Because that's the one thing, if I'm Jamal Hill, I'm looking to expose this defense. You know, even if you don't take them down, you're able to fatigue it through the grappling side where you're able to make the body heavy to eventually start doing work. Got to take away and chip away some of that power that he actually has. You know, and his ability to get back to his feet. Once he's tired, man, he's tired. We saw it. Does he have heart? 100%. I wish I could go back and say one of, one of this guy's strengths as a grappler who's kind of limited with the grappling is his heart. His durability of him still, you can't, you cannot count a guy like Alex Pineda out. And he's just, he's like, as I said before, he's, he's just a bit limited. He's a, he's a bit limited on his feet. And that's one thing that, that, that I would say Jamal Hill's gonna have to throw out all these other weapons because if Jamal Hill just only goes in there and tries to strike with the dude that has won, that's been a double champ at the Glory World Championships, you know, good luck with that one. And he does get, even as, a, even as a great striker, he does get a little too comfortable. He will break distance and looking to kind of chip, chip away, hit the body, come up top. But it's that one right hand like Israel Adesanya caught him in that could change everything. I tell you what, you know who has a little more power than Israel Adesanya? And particularly because he's a heavier guy, Jamal Hill. And without further ado, let's talk about Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. His strengths. It's, he's, a, he's a forward pressure guy. And this could really help him because with Alex Pereira, if you take away that leg kick, you just gotta be careful with the hook. But if you're able to use that forward pressure with straight punches, things tend to change. And not just that, but his actual cardio. You know, his cardio of, of Jamal Hill going in there and going five rounds. I mean, the dude was still swinging from the first bout to the fifth bell against Glover Teixeira, but he was able to win. His counter ability, we saw with Johnny Walker, we saw when Johnny Walker threw that jab and this dude comes over the top, he comes over the top as, as a southpaw and boom, ends up knocking him out. His ability to counter is absolutely pretty good, man. And I think that's one, that's, I think that's one area where he may want to kind of lure in a guy like, uh, like Alex Pereira to eventually counter him with either that left hook or those straight punches that he's really good at. Knockout power. His knockout power is, 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 I mean, the record shows it all. I mean, he makes people go silly. He makes people go limp like a pimp, but he does have power. And that's one thing that also a guy like Alex Pereira for his debut of going up against, I know he went to, I know he went up against uh, the Polish power, but the Polish power did, did not take enough risks like this dude does. But without further ado, let's go over Jamal's Hill's weaknesses. You know, he will stay on the center line. I think that's the biggest thing against a guy like Alex Pereira. I would say get him against the cage. Like make him really backpedal if you're gonna do that. But that 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 crazy left hook is just too crazy, man. It's too dynamic. So he's gonna have to be careful there. He's and, and there's at times, you know, Jamal he was a technical fighter. He's a technical fighter that at times, and I don't get it with a lot of these fighters, they just tend to fight, they tend to brawl. And I really don't get it, and I really don't, don't understand it. When it's technical, keep it technical. If it's not that way, then you know, like like stick to that strength. But at times you do have to get into those bras and do it. He's super heavy on that left leg, man. As a southpaw too, Glover was able to kick him. Uh, a lot of the guy who, who he was able to, uh, who he fought, were able to get to that lead leg and there was no like pushback. There was no kind of like evading the kick or smothering it. 
Like it's only, with Alex Pereira, it's gonna, it, it could only take about two or three kicks and that's it. The fight is completely different. So this is, this is one area where a guy like Jamal Hill is gonna have to be really careful because Alex Pereira is, is coming in heavy and he's coming in hot. And then coming off an injury, coming off a long lay of his uh, uh, Achilles? Achilles. Achilles? Achilles. I don't know where I, I don't know where I got the R from, but his yeah, an injury like the Achilles. I mean, that thing takes a minute to to you know to to get better. But I will say this: he is 29 years old. He does have youth behind him. Pereira is what 36. I mean, this is where he could capitalize. I mean, that's seven years, man. I want to say Pereira is about to turn 37 too. And I know, man, as an old king. Like it's it's different the recovery that like you can be really good at first. As time goes on, that recovery starts to change a little bit. It'll take you a little bit longer. So that means Pereira needs to become a lot more tactical. But will this injury is he a hundred percent? Is he a hundred percent ready? Is it is it a hundred percent healed? I mean those are those those are the only questions that a guy like him needs to answer. And here we have it. Getting back to the tail of the tape. Strike slanted per minute. Jamal Hill. He is the aggressor. And this is something to look at. Jamal, if Jamal Hill goes for broke right away, he catches him with that with that one shot, gets him looking sloppy. It, it, it could be a good night for, for Alex Pereira. You know, a, a strikes absorbed per minute. I mean 3.65 to 3.35. I mean, Jamal Hill, Jamal, God, Lee, Jamal Hill. So defensively, Jamal Hill is getting less. He's getting hit less. And that's one thing to kind of keep in mind is because he is a risk taker and he does have a little bit more power than that, but he has been chinny. Nobody has really tested his chin since Israel Adesanya. It is different. Striking accuracy. Wow, and keep in mind too, guys. These guys have fought the, the, you know, the, I would say they're equal with the level of competitor that they've actually fought. But that's one thing to take a look at, dude. The strike, the striking accuracy. I mean, it's pretty much even. Yeah, significant strike defense. Pereira, that's just years and years of. But you guys got to keep in mind though too, like the MMA gloves, it changes everything. It does change everything. Take down defense, Jamal Hill, but I don't think he has to worry about that. I don't see this guy going in for takedowns, but he could surprise him and he could maybe take him down, but this guy has good sprawling bra. So we'll see. I think there's a lot up for grabs, but if I had to pick somebody, even though I freaking love these tattoos, I love this. This is my favorite tattoo. You know, I, I really like it, dude. You know what I'm saying? If you imagine seeing a dude like that with two uh, things, I mean, that shit, that'll put me in a good mood. You know, so I like it. I like it. You know, but if I had to bet my money, if I had to bet my money somewhere, you know, if I had to bet my money somewhere, I mean, it's hard, but it's hard to count out the champ. If Jamal Hill is just decide, if Jamal Hill is able to go in there with straight punches and pretty much go, you know, go for broke, because if he's planning on, if he's planning to strike the whole fight, then take your chances early. But if he's able to bring in wrestling, I can see him. And if he has been training wrestling and he's able to use that against Alex Pereira, fatigue him, slow him down, take away a little bit of that power with the grappling, that I can see it. But I think as of right now, man, as much as I'm going for Alec, as much as, you know, I would love for Jamal Hill to win, man, it's, it's hard. It's hard to count out the guy who everybody wants to strike and expect to win. But I got to go with the one and only. I got to go with the one and only. Botan. Let's put it. Let's put an arrow here. Let's put a, let's put an arrow back here. You know, I gotta go with the one and only Alex Pereira for their victory. Either via knockout, I see. I, I don't see this fight maybe going past a couple rounds. I really don't. I think. Uh, I think. I think this ends uh, ends up in a knockout because they're both gonna stay on their feet and go for broke. But if I had to pick someone, then more likely probably get it because this guy's already talking about fighting in Rio in 301. 
I gotta go with Alex Pereira. And this video was brought to you by the one and only Aptive. Again, guys, if you're not done competing, if you're a person that doesn't like to take no for an answer, well, guess what, guys? Aptive is for you. They will teach you how to sell. They will house you. They will fly you over to literally teach you how to sell. I know between 17 and 8 year old kids, kids out of high school that are foregoing college to live the American dream. Yes, you will be going in door to door knock, but guess what guys? It is all worth it. Build that team, teach you how to sell, and guys, you will be living that American dream. So make sure to go to summersouth.org slash triple C because it is time to level up. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, AKA Triple C. Till next time, I'm out.